Thank you, Carlos. Um, let me figure out how to work with this. Uh, anyway, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ai Jamal, and I work at Google. I am very excited to be here at the first Knative Con, uh, and I started working on the project somewhat recently, mainly helping with the transition of uh, the Knative project from Google to CNCF. And uh, through this work, I met a lot of wonderful people, made a few great friends, and uh, I'm meeting a few of them here for the first time in person, so that's really exciting. And um, again, uh, this is really special day because um, I get to be part of Knative Con. I get to uh, like celebrate a lot of like big milestones of the project, and uh, yeah, it evolved dramatically over the last few years, and uh, uh, and the community has been like awesome. It's vibrant and big, and a lot of like big partners contributing to it, and it's really awesome to be part of it. And um, yeah, I uh, wanted to take this opportunity given to me uh, just to yes, take all of you <laughs> back the history lane and remind how it all started. It might be really hard to, to do it all in five minutes, but I'll try. No. Um, so it's kind of impossible to talk about Knative without mentioning Kubernetes, right? And that's why we're here, and that's what KubeCon is about, and all of that. Uh, and uh, in 2014, when Google open-sourced Kubernetes, um, it fundamentally changed how organizations uh, manage their infrastructure, develop and deploy their software. Like it created this whole new way of building uh, services where development teams could work independently and develop and deploy like services super, super fast, faster than ever before. And then in 2015, uh, Google uh, partnered with the Linux Foundation and they formed CNCF, where Kubernetes lived since then. And uh, Kubernetes evolved and matured, and there were a lot of new projects uh, appearing close to the Kubernetes ecosystem, and uh, a lot of like big collaboration, big partners started contributing to these projects. And in 2017, Google uh, and its partners, they released Istio that um, address the need uh, to easily connect and manage microservices that operators needed. And it helped them to understand what was happening in the back of the infrastructure a lot better. And around that time, uh, people um, like, like understood that there was a new need uh, that emerged uh, for users to automate the boring parts of uh, building and running services to uh, to be able to focus on high value differentiating like features and uh, that's how people started thinking about Knative uh, meaning uh, Kubernetes native um, and I did some digging into the original like design docs and the goals for the project and all of that. And uh, by the way, uh, initially the Knative project was called Elafros. It's just a small fun fact for you. And uh, the original design goals were uh, to have something that was very like familiar for Kubernetes users that would cover the tasks of uh, building your containers and uh, deploying and scaling workloads and managing events uh, in your applications at scale and um, like that were also conformant. And um, that is how Knative was born. Uh, the first commit uh, to Knative repository happened on January 30th, 2018. So uh, we invested in these uh, projects and made them open source because at Google, uh, we believe that open cloud enables faster and better innovation. It reduces uh, risks of vendor lock-in and um, like gives customers the flexibility and choice to manage, migrate, and uh, like um, build uh, all their applications across different uh, cloud providers and customers have autonomy and control over their data and applications and they can adopt Google technologies uh, without having the technology risk. And um, 
open standard also creates value and uh, trustworthiness for all the ecosystem partners. Uh, the users of software, they, they get transparency and consistency uh, for the uh, software they use. And uh, uh, service providers get to rely on um, all the uh, and rely and benefit from partner ecosystem, like in case of Knative, right? And um, Knative and its well-defined APIs um, enable all of these benefits uh, for the whole ecosystem. Like users can uh, run workloads on Kubernetes, on prem, or on cloud, and service providers can build high value, like. Uh, for their customer <laughs> customers by providing conformant and portable uh, managed services. And that's exactly the value Google gets out of Knative as well. Uh, we're able to uh, bring Google Cloud services to more physical locations and work uh, to provide the best-in-class managed service that is Knative conformant. Um, yeah, and I said, uh, an open cloud relies uh, on open source to deliver the portability that users expect. And that's why it was very important for the Knative community to release its uh, official Knative specs and build a conformance process to have a single uh, standard API that all service providers would meet and uh, conform to. And that way, we could guarantee our users that their code would work out of the box if they were switched to other uh, cloud providers, other service providers, and um, even like if they want to move to different physical locations and so on, without worrying too much. And um, it was a big milestone for the project to uh, to reach 1.0 conformance specs, and a lot of people put a lot of work into it and we established a like clear conformance uh, process and as a result uh, Google have now submitted a cloud run and cloud run for Antos uh, to Google products based on Knative for conformance review and it's going through the process and um, it's thanks to many people uh, who worked on this conformance specs that we were able to uh, fulfill Knative's uh, promise of portability. And this pull request is still open. If you, <laughs> if you are assigned to, to them, don't forget to, to review them, OK? <laughs> and um, I mean, that leads us to where Knative is today. I mean, we can talk a lot about like different things that happened in the project, but I think that today it has like eight commercial offerings based on, on Knative, and there's like 450 companies contributing to it. There's like more than 2,000 contributors to the project, and it's super like big and huge for any open source project, especially, I would say, relatively this young. And um, also, Knative became the most popular serverless uh, layer on Kubernetes, which is a big thing to celebrate over and over. And, um, and if you've been following the community, more exciting things happened in the past um, a few months. And in November last year, uh, Google announced their intention to donate um, Knative to CNCF. And February this year, Knative project was officially uh, accepted to CNCF incubation, which allows this new phase of community-driven innovation uh, in Knative to begin. And uh, this is very exciting. And uh, we are super excited about things to come to Knative uh, within, like, CNCF, very close to Kubernetes and its ecosystem projects. Uh, we expect great collaborations to continue with the communities in cloud native ecosystem, uh, especially now that uh, we announced uh, that Istio will be also joining CNCF, and uh, which means that there is a full stack for serverless applications development now. And uh, as Google, we are committed uh, to support and improve critical cloud native open source projects by working with our customers, uh, our partners, uh, foundations, and open source communities. And yeah, that's it for me. I uh, want to give the space to the next person before I get kicked out. 